In the 4th or 3rd century BC, a manuscript entitled Periplus appeared. Even though there is no evidence of the identity of the author of this work, some believe it was a certain Skylax, who lived in the 6th century BC and was a sailor and an explorer in service to Persia. The only data for Skylax is given by Herodotus. In lack of authentic information about the author of the work Periplus, the ordinance Pseudo-Skylax became accepted. The borders of the Greek territories in ancient times are described in this work. Here we read. From Abrazia, Greece is continuous along the coast, as far as the river Peneus. So, we see that this author too undoubtedly believed that the Greek borders and territories in ancient times were only around Peloponnesus and somewhat further north, south of Olympus. The Ambrician Gulf is located south from Epirus, while the river Peneus passes through Larissa. This automatically means that not only the Macedonians and Macedonia, but Epirus and the Epirots were not treated as Greek. Strabo was born in the first half of the first century BC, in the region Pontus, present-day Turkey. He was a famous ancient geographer and historian. However, his work History is almost completely lost with an exception of a fragment on Papyrus, which is kept in Milan today. Still, Strabo himself wrote about this work in his other well-known work titled Geography. This work, written in 17 books, represents a geographic historical description of a great number of nations and areas from the world at that time. Strabo passed away in 23 AD. In his work Geography, Strabo mentions the Macedonians over 20 times, very clearly separating them from the Greeks and the Greek territories. We will list a few examples. In the second book, while writing about the islands in the Aegean Sea, Strabo clearly points out that Macedonia is a separate part to Greece. In the Aegean are the Cyclades, the Sporades, and the isles that lie off Caria, Ionia, and Aeolis, up to the Troad. I mean, Kos, Samos, Cheos, Lesbos, and Tenedos. So also those that lie off Greece as far as Macedonia and Thrace, the next country beyond Macedonia. In the same book, Strabo writes about the history of Europe, decisively separating the Macedonians from the Greeks, mentioning them as separate nations. So that throughout its entire extent, the agricultural and civilized element dwells side by side with the warlike element. But of the two elements, the one that is peace-loving is more numerous and therefore keeps control over the whole body. And the leading nations too, formerly the Greeks and later the Macedonians and the Romans, have taken hold and helped. In the 8th book, Strabo describes the Greek ethnocultural territories at the time in which Macedonia is not included. Here we read. I began my description by going over all the western parts of Europe, comprised between the inner and the outer sea. And now that I have encompassed in my survey all the barbarian tribes in Europe, as far as the Tanais, and also a small part of Greece, 
Macedonia, I now shall give an account of the remainder of the geography of Greece. My account ended on the west and the north with the tribes of the Epirotis and of the Illyrians, and on the east with those of the Macedonians as far as Byzantium. After the Epirotis and the Illyrians, then come the following peoples of the Greeks, the Achananians, the Aetolonians, and the Azolian Locrians, and next the Phocians and Boeotians. And opposite these, across the arm of the sea, is the Peloponnesus, which with these encloses the Corinthian Gulf, and not only shapes the Gulf, but also is shaped by it. And after Macedonia, the Thessalians, extending as far as the Malians, and the countries of the rest of the peoples outside the Isthmus and also of those inside. Further on, Strabo writes that Greece at the time had many tribes, but Greek were just the ones that spoke in the Greek dialects. So he gives the name of these tribes in detail. Ionians, Dorians, Aeolians, Athenians and Arcadians. Of course, the Macedonians aren't mentioned anywhere among them. In the 13th book, Strabo writes that the mountain Olympus was Macedonian, and he calls it the Macedonian Olympus. In fact, even the greatest ancient geographer Strabo, with his famous book Geography, represents a strong opponent to the present-day Greek propaganda. <laughs> 